uh, very good morning to all of you and uh, first of all i extend my sincere thanks to respected dr nima nimaichan saha sir librarian at uh, vishwabharti university for uh, uh, for inviting me for the for, for the speak for on a very important topic which is nowadays very important in lieu of the librarian just wait oh, yeah oh, then aap register mein pm mein se baat kar lo theek hai mera ek lecture chal raha hai sir wo aapko milne ke liye kanji se mai ye nahi hai main thodi der mein aata hu उंट Uh, the era during uh, 2010 to 2015 we were encountering that how why, how it will impact the library job or the library's uh, librarian's performance so at that time we were thinking that we could be we could be uh, 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 get other adverse effect on the jobs of the librarian so because all th all the things are uh, uh, just Uh, coming in the internet on the or the other other things computers are supporting the things but nowadays now we are getting on other challenges too like artificial artificial intelligence tools are coming and a number of other things uh, are uh, basically regularly introduced by by the uh, Uh, the by the development of icts around the world but my dear friends uh, apart from that uh, the li the librarians as you know the cost of the uh, publish publishings and the contents and the documents it is uh, uh, rising day by day so even if uh, uh, we are talking if i am sitting in delhi and uh, and we are interacting various part of the india but uh, india but still if we talk about the uh, costing of the documents and the costing of the publications it is rising at a very fast rate and you know <clears throat> one thing i just want to uh, share with you like uh, you, uh, the all the publishing uh, contents whatever we are procuring whatever we are providing uh, by uh, purchasing from the publishers the all contents are created are developed by are created and developed by uh, the by the by the researchers only and the same contents whatever the researchers are developing the the uh, publishers they grab that contents and they just uh, make stamp of their own and they sell it uh, sell it to uh, us again so here the the role and the responsibilities of the librarians begins you know most of the universities most of the academic institutions what they are doing nowadays uh, and not only in india i am talking about a uh, complete universe now each and every universities each and every education institutions they have certain policy and guidelines and on the basis of that policy guidelines uh a policy uh, 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 are being created uh, uh, and regularly uh, the the people they are uh, developing that type of policy so that the intellectual output of the researchers of the professors uh, uh they um, uh, it should come in the public domain it should come to the uh, to the uh, researchers or the future uh, future uh, students so that they can grab such type of uh, information free of cost and you know the cause uh, 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 in later slide we will discuss about a number of initiatives which have been taken place around the world so that so that the uh, the cost of the uh, uh, the material or even whatever the uh, research outcomes or the scholarships uh, is being generated by the researchers where public money is involved it should come to the uh, general public or the students and the academic communities and you know uh, most of the librarians and the information professionals they are playing a very greater role for disseminating or uh, for uh, getting such type of uh, policies and the initiatives for the researchers and the uh, uh, academic community so uh, now with this note i would uh, request to allow me to share my screen yes ah uh, as i believe my screen is visible to all so uh, in today's talk we will discuss about various open access policies and compliances and a number of open access resources which are available 
uh, and which you can use to disseminate to your students and the faculty members. So before starting, I would uh, love to share one of my experience with all of you. Uh, during the COVID period, uh, as you know, uh, as I'm a law librarian, uh, I, I just made, made, made a research and I found that around uh, 2,500 law colleges, departments, universities are there in India and out of 25,000 uh, 2500 uh, law uh, departments and universities uh, only only hardly uh, I think a uh, few hundred 200 or uh, something uh, the uh, universities they have the they, they at that time they had the access of the uh, commercial database which were which, which which are very much used which are very much in use for doing legal research and education <coughs> so you know, uh, when we uh, see the, uh, the the content of the law library, so we, we should have the case laws, we should have the legislations, we should have the scholarships, and apart from that, the regulations, uh, the legal regulations and the acts, acts and reports. So, you know, the most of the materials are available free of course. So at that time, me uh, with Dr. Priya Rai, we uh, took one uh, initiative and we created three web portals uh, where we indexed all the legal information available free of cost around the world and we circulate uh, we circulated uh, uh, about this websites to all the 2500 law colleges and apart from that we also came up on publications uh, and we circulated that particular uh, publications to all the all the law schools and most of the law schools law colleges or the university they they circulated that particular uh, uh, book or uh, and the detail about the websites to uh, all their patrons so that they could be able to uh, use open access resources available around the world which are very much uh, usable as uh, compared to the commercial data databases which for which a normal law university is paying more than 1 crore annually mm -hmm. so uh, First of all, uh, in today's talk, we are going to discuss about, about the basic understanding of the open access movement. I think a uh, number of resource persons, they already uh, discussed about the open access movement around the world. So we will uh, give a small overview about it. Apart from that, we will also discuss about open access policy, uh, publishing and policies and various open access initiatives we will also discuss. And uh, we will also have a small overview over open access content management, how a librarian with the help of, uh, 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 with the help of uh, various open source uh, softwares or the contents can manage all open uh, public domain or the open access resources at a single platform so that uh, we can serve our clientele, our students or the faculty members in, a, in the best manner way. So first of all, you know, uh, open access movement, it is not new. We know it uh, was started uh, as it is assumed that started in 1997 when Open Archive was uh, uh, initiated. So it is basically a, a, a tool we, uh, in the hand of the librarians. With the help of that, we can bridge the gap between scholarly communication and publishing. So uh, first of all, uh, as you know, we, we should first of all, we should understand why should go for the open access. You know, go, open access is is uh, basically a, a platform is a tool where we can serve our users with with, with numerous of reasons like you know uh, when uh, we talk about the uh, the articles you know uh, the professors and the researchers they uh, write articles and they write books and uh, it is obviously when they write the things they uh, never uh, it is not uh, it, it can't say that they are writing the all the things at their home or they are using their personal resources they might obviously they are using the resources at uh, the resources at uh, uh, at, at, the, at their edu educational institutions or the, uh, their uh, professional uh, organizations. So uh, that professional organizations and institutions are actually uh, 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 served with the help of the taxpayers' money. So this money, uh, if we uh, say that open access, it, it's a free, it is not free because when uh, the, the open access resources we are uh, serving to our users, so in such circumstances, uh, the generation of the open access, we should uh, assume that the public cost is involved. And uh, apart from that, good information uh, supply is also possible with the help of the open access resources. Because when when uh, you know when we uh, uh, cite a thing, when we uh, 
provide a, a detail in in the in the close access from the close access databases so there is some boundations but when we go for the open access so information may be supplied in a very good uh, way uh, in in good and better way and innovations and research for the innovation and research open access is very uh, very much much needed in today's environment so apart from that authors if we talk about the good findability and long term access open access is very uh, very useful because most of the publishers when they uh, grab money from a piece of the uh, research product so after the, after some times uh, they just jump to the, uh, to the to the scholarships of the other peoples and they just dump the things you know uh, you know the concept of the uh, the uh, uh, titles uh, titles which are uh, out of print after some times uh, the publishers they just inform so if we uh, support the open access we uh, uh, in later slide we will discuss about how we can do uh, support and we can uh, build the strong open access uh, open access platforms with the help of the uh, open access policy so apart from that authors fees license their work as they they see fit so a number of uh, we will discuss uh, the open access uh, licenses in later slide so uh, if author if they uh, have some uh, so financial support from the funding agency or they uh, he or she uh, just want to put uh, his scholarship on any platform where uh, some cost involved so in such case author fees is wrong so also uh, in uh, paid for for the better better visibility of the authors uh, 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 authors uh, uh, research outcomes so apart from that collaborations and networks are also very important when when we need uh, the open access apart from that research, research funders and the institution policies are also there and when we put the uh, uh, our open access uh, res uh, 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 our scholarship in open access we can also get the high visibility so these are the things we have to keep in mind and we have to pass to our researchers professors uh, at the time when we are drafting uh, the open access policy for your institution so that they feel very uh, feel comfortable uh, for uh, giving their uh, academic outcome for uh, uh, for uh, keeping uh, at your institutional repository or any at any other place where uh, we are just thinking to put our uh, scholarships in open access so apart from that it is you know uh, when we put all the all the things in open so it is free and fast access to scholarly information to rest of the words so uh, my dear friend as i uh, previously said that the open access uh, actually it is uh, not new it it was started in 1990 when uh, 91 uh, when uh, the archives it was uh, launched actually one uh, preprint server it was uh, launched for uh, saving the physics uh, subject based scholarships and uh, it is uh, basically we uh, known as uh, the starting of the open access uh, era uh, uh, even uh, even uh, it was uh, the uh, the american american defense network at uh, uh, in 1960s at that time too the online uh, accessing of the uh, material online accessing of the information it was started but the open access of that scholarly communication it was uh, actually started in 1991 after that 1997 uh, sai elo uh, it was established in brazil and uh, later it uh, it was explained uh, 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 later it was expanding to cover latin america and south africa so uh, after that in 200 2000 open access general publishing which we known as plos and f1000 open uh, peer review publishing platform it was established and after that creative common uh, common licenses which uh, in uh, we will discuss in uh, a later slide in detail so creative common licenses uh, uh, found uh, it, uh, it it is basically an uh, ngo a non profit making organization it was founded in usa and spark european established to promote open access so this is basically the starting time where when the actual open access initiatives were uh, being started around the world so uh, in 2002 buddha based open access initiative it was released during the during the buddha based conference and in the same time uh, read like launched in uh, mexico as open access digital library and bibliographical database so uh, this is basically the initial time when uh, uh, since 2002 uh, 2002 3 it was the rising time for the open access and most of the time most of the uh, library professionals and the it professionals they were uh, meeting at a single place with the uh, prof, uh, with the uh, 
subjects experts like uh, in uh, 2002 the law professor of law they met at a place uh, which we call at montreal and in montreal they uh, came up with an agreement and they uh, established one uh, forum which we known as free access to law movement and under this arrangement all the law professors they agreed that Uh, uh the law generated by the public agencies like you know the supreme court they uh, pronounce judgments ju- uh, courts pronounce judgments and the parliaments they uh, uh, come up with the legislation and uh, several uh, uh, commissions and committees uh, uh, commissions are there like human rights commissions are there so uh, a number of uh, uh, constitutional organizations whatever they are delivering around the world the all content should come in the public and on the basis of that in montreal to uh, 202 uh, one law via internet uh, during the law via internet conference <clears throat> one platform was established which we know as legal information institute of india you know if you need the legal information i am saying legal information because uh, 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 this information is used for the legal research and the education law research and the education so uh, you can visit to the world legal information institute basically world legal information institute is it's it's a web portal uh, 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 you can write world lii.org so with the help of that portal you can reach to any legal document any legislation constitutional do- document of any country around around the world so uh, uh, on the basis of this movement uh, the organization free access to law movement it supports it maintains the world legal information institute portal and apart from that they also man- manage around 43 uh, subcontinent or the country based legal institutions uh, by which you can uh, uh, get the maximum type of information free of cost so in such case now uh, uh, if you have you have a law in your university uh, you can uh, you can uh, inform to your users that they can uh, if you don't have access to west law lexis which are uh, charging more than 5 lakhs per year so most of the information you will get with the help of wlii so in after 2002 budapest open access initiatives and the red leg uh, launched in mexico, mexico a bethesda statements on licensing and burling declaration it was published in 2003 which supported we supported the open access movement in a very in a very strong way and uh, with the help of the three uh, initiatives budapest bethesda and berlin uh, the library professionals the information pro- professionals got the clear cut definitions and the reasons on which the librarians uh, are uh, uh, till date are doing a marvelous and the tremendous job in the field of open access information management so apart uh, 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 after 2032 uh, uh, in 2008 us nih public access uh, policy was passed and on the basis of this the the information about uh, about the uh, the us uh, uh, public information which is uh, which was passed uh, which was actually allowed to provide in public it was uh, provided in open access so after that in uh, 2013 Uh, before 2013 20110 which is not mentioned in this timeline in 2010 uh, one initiative was taken care uh, say and on the by the law universities and on the basis of that initiatives on on the basis of that policy <coughs> uh, all the law schools in usa uh, the law university uh, the universities are called as law schools so all the law schools librarians they came up at a, at a single place and they agreed that all the law journals published by all the law schools around the usa they they they, they, <clears throat> they will not publish it uh, in a print format and they will print it in uh, in only digital format and they will host the all the issues the all the at least the latest five issues uh, through the websites free of cost to, to the public so it was it was a very uh, very uh, important movement started in 2010 and on the basis of that a number of universities not the law universities the rest of the universities even the science universities and uh, the other university they started hosting their 
uh, official journals on the websites of that particular university, uh, especially maintained by the librarians with the help of the library on the library web page. So uh, after that, in uh, as in 2013, US, UK, EU, and Australia, they passed or expand open access policies, which was the very important period for the open access uh, open access supporters. Uh, uh, in 2015, Bill and Melinda Gates actually they founded publishing uh, publishing open access policy and OA2020 launched. And on the basis of that policies, a number of initiatives, a number of big uh, a big uh, initiatives were taken by the corporate, uh, co by the by the giant corporates around the world. So apart from that, you know, uh, in 2018, that is uh, the very important the Plan S initiatives. It was adopted in launch, and you know uh, the importance of Plan S as actually uh, uh, being a library, and we should make, and we should do. Uh, uh, we should do something for uh, such type of initiative in India too. So Plan S initiative, what was the Plan S initiatives? So according to Plan S initiatives, all the professors, all the researchers who are doing research on the basis of the public fund or within the any within any organizations, it will be requiring, it will be mandating to submit their preprint and uh, 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 and their research outcome uh, uh, to the institutional repository of that particular institutions and uh, on the basis of the uh, the union on the basis of the complete european union the all scholarships will be available to access to the researchers scientists and the educators and the students so that they can get the uh, more benefit out of the uh, uh, out of the uh, research uh, whatever uh, the researchers have uh, come up in the conclusion based on the uh, uh, the funding uh, involved in such things. So apart from that, in two th 2018, Open Research Africa and Open uh, Africa Archives, it was also established and, and the MLE CA, a platform to provide infrastructure for a diamond and a diamond open access. It was created in uh, uh, South Africa. So uh, uh, since 2000. Uh, to like uh, uh, 2018, it was the golden time for open access uh, initiators and the movement takers. So uh, after that, you know, uh, we uh, had the worst time during the COVID time. But you know, uh, during the COVID time, a number of initiatives were taken by the commercial publishers too. They just came up to uh, surrender the rights of access, and they provided a number of their resources free of cost under the uh, not only the gold open policies uh, under under the voluntary uh, model and uh, they provided access of their uh, their uh, uh, pay vault uh, scholarship free of cost for the general public and apart from that uh, uh, covid 19 as you know uh, it the pandemic it was resulted and it, 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 it's uh, during the uh, time in a in a low uh, the pay wall it was basically uh, uh it, it was uh, dramatically uh, uh reduced basically most of the most of the uh, uh the publishers they uh just came up with the as i already explained you so apart from that uh, the preprint culture was uh started during that time and you know uh each and every uh difficulties uh each and every uh challenges come with with some easiness after passing uh, that type of uh, difficulties and covid it was actually also the lesson for uh, the for us so that uh, we can uh, keep we can uh, provide we can circulate the open access movement or and the open access materials on the basis of uh, on the basis of that uh, on the basis of uh, the, the researchers they, those who are at that time were not able to come to the library can come to the can reach to that particular information. So in 2021, uh, UNESCO uh, uh, also published fund recommendations on open science as global policy framework. And uh, on the basis of uh, this uh, policy, a number of institutions and a number of companies who are uh, a number of countries who are the signing authorities of uh, signing signatories of the UNESCO, uh, they adopted the open science policy so that the the scientific data may be uh, circulated may be exchanged uh, around the globe so apart from that in 2021 china it launched national open science science cloud and uh, uh, as you know china is a closed country but still uh, some uh, mous were uh, uh, actually 
uh, uh, sign between uh, china and the round uh, uh, and the rest of the world and few uh, <coughs> research of the china on open science it was it was provided in open access for rest of the world so in 2002 if we talk about the 2022 uh, at that time us announced immediate public access to all us funded research by 2025 so this is the this is the thing uh, which uh, is basically uh, resulted after the covid that the most of the governments they uh, directed uh, is uh, as us uh, all, uh, already came up with that, that if some some uh, research has uh, the uh, usage of the funding of uh, of the government bodies. So in such case, the all uh, uh, research should come in open access up to 2025. And apart from that, action plans for diamond open access, uh, it was also launched by a coalition of open access or various open access organizations. And nowadays, if you will see the websites of the renowned publication, it may be the Oxford University Press, it may be the uh, it may be the Cambridge University, it may be the Routledge or any scientific publication. So you will find that the, all the renowned publishers they have one open uh, gold open access policy arrangement. If some uh, researcher is or uh, some group of researchers are doing some research research and they just want to publish their research work in the form of monograph or book or the research articles, so they can put their research in open access with the, with uh, with some nominal fees or whether whatever the fees they have uh, finalized based on uh, based on the country where uh, uh, the research has been done so apart from that in 2023 uh, eu highlighted needs of non profit open access publishing model with no author or reader cost so that so that the, the information uh, may run may reach to the required people may, may reach to the needy uh, researchers or the scientists at a very fast uh, uh, rate or now we are in 2024 so uh, uh, in 2024 a number of initiatives have already been started a number of uh, as uh, in law universities if you talk we are uh, developing one open access policy for law uh, university in india so uh, uh, based on based on that policies we we, we are just going to come up within uh, next four or five months, uh, 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 we are uh, we are just going to uh, keep a number of things, number of uh, points where the uh, where uh, the, uh, the the research of the law universities they it should come at a single platform for the benefit of the rest of the world. So uh, apart from that, if we uh, dis uh, we see the share of the open access uh, publications or the articles year wise, so. <coughs> you will see that you will see that uh, 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 since 2011 uh, to 2020 uh, as the data is available up, uh, up to uh, 2020 so uh, now the share of open access articles it is grooming so uh, uh, the this uh, statistic shows that most of the researchers most of the academic institutions or even the publishers uh, where they are uh, providing the gold open access facilities uh, it is coming uh, it is basically uh, enhancing to use in, uh, uh, in in open access so uh, as uh, i'll uh, give us a, a small overview about the three b's as we have already discussed so uh, because these three b's were the first uh, step where uh, we got the concept of open access. So first is uh, if we talk about the Buddha Post open access initiatives, it was uh, actually uh, came up in the uh, on 14 February 2002 in Budapest uh, during a conference. And uh, 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 apart from that, uh, uh, apart from that, if we talk about Bethesda, it is basically uh, the, the the conference where uh, the the initiatives adopted where the op actual the open access information uh, definitions and the concept was uh, coined. And uh, the second one was the Bethesda statement, as and, and uh, it is basically uh, it was related to the open access publishing, and it, it was adopted in 11th April 2002, Maryland, Maryland USA. And in Bethesda, uh, basically uh, in Bethesda, if we talk about the Bethesda, it was about the financial institutional statements. It was uh, they, they just came up with the library for the library and the publishers. They came up with the certain guidelines and the regulations for the scientific and uh, scientific uh, science for scientists and scientific 
uh, organizations and uh, uh, the third one is the berlin declaration which was on open access to knowledge in the science and humanities which was adopted in 22 uh, 22nd october 2003 and uh, if we talk about the <clears throat> the essence of all three uh, statements or the initiatives so basically uh, uh, after uh, uh, after getting uh, some overview and some expertise of the of the experts uh, 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 those who uh, just framed the open access policies on the basis of these three ways uh, we came up with the with the, with the three things and first thing is the self archiving and we know it as we, uh, nowadays we have a number of tools and, and a number of platforms on the basis of that we are managing and we are maintaining the institutional repository at uh, institutions uh, most of uh, the most of you might be uh, using the uh, uh, the the uh, various uh, softwares for maintaining irs at your uh, institutions so apart from that a various open access journals it, it came up with the help of the gold and the green roofs you know uh, up nowadays a number of uh, institution a number of uh, a number of uh, organizations uh, research organizations or the academic organizations they are publishing open access journals with cost or the no cost and uh, a number of uh, the commercial uh, 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 publishers they are they have come up with the golden route of publishers so <clears throat> so uh, these uh, these three bees were very important and this is the short as i as i assume that it is visible to you all so this is basically the ram statement as i uh, informed you uh, that in 2008 the law librarians from the university of chicago columbia university cornell university duke university Georgetown universities, Harvard university, New York university, and a number uh, and, and, and a number of other universities, they meet at the Haram University, and they uh, came up with with the arrangement that all the publisher all the publications of the law reviews, law journals, it will come free of cost to the general public. So apart from that, one more uh, policy guidelines which uh, the librarian should know is the policy guidelines for the development of promotion of government public domain information. You know. Uh, 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 apart from the books uh, coined by the authors, a number of reports are also there, which uh, generally we need to procure. So on such type of reports, such type of monographs, such type of, uh, of research reports uh, are available free of cost on open access resources. Why they are uh, available free of cost? Actually, in 2004, uh, uh, UNESCO, uh, it comes up with one policy guidelines and it it said that uh, uh, it actually it, uh, explained the term public domain information first of all and public domain information it explained that it is a term which refers to public uh, publicly accessible information the use of which does not infringe any legal right or any obligation of confidentiality uh, so this policy guidelines it said that the government, uh, each and every government, which is part of the UN, they must come up uh, with some digital arrangement so that the reports and the guides and any statistics and uh, uh, we will discuss in later whatever the India Indian government has uh, uh, come up with uh, such type of uh, information under this guideline. So, to all the information and any public data, any government or inf information, any official information, it should be voluntarily made available by the government or international organization to rest of the world. So, you know, uh, uh, think of the period 20, uh, 0, uh, 2002, 2010, it was a very vibrant time and a number of international and national initiatives, it was taken and the various policies was uh, policies were adopted uh, for uh, supporting open access so uh, after uh, three b's we also uh, we also knew that a number of uh, open access publishing platforms may also be adopted for publishing the scholarships for providing uh, open access uh, of such scholarships along with the preserving of the right of the of the authors you know, why uh, 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 you know why uh, the scholars they prefer to publish with the uh, renowned publishers. One thing is, uh, uh, it's okay that some uh, researchers thinks that they should go with the renowned publishers. They should uh, publish 
with the bloomsbury or uh, maybe the till and francis routledge uh, for uh, just for the sake of their reputation but apart from that one more fear is also there uh, always exist in the scholars and the uh, the contributors or the authors they think that if they will put their uh, information in open access uh, somebody will still uh, in for uh, uh, still their intellectual asset and they will use their intellectual assets in their in, in, in uh, and anybody and any part of the world they can publish it by their own name uh, maybe make me call it academic uh, dishonesty or cheating may be done by uh, the people so for for this a new type of arrangement uh, the open access licenses were introduced uh, by various organizations so uh, <coughs> based on based on the number of a number of open access licenses were uh, actually uh, provided so uh, that 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 is one point and another point is that you know uh, the most of the things like uh, if we talk about uh, the academic uh, higher education in the universities or the college or the or the or the uh, co college or the university or the institutions so uh, you know whatever uh, the things are published whatever the research scholarships are published uh, these are only 5 or 10% because you know uh, a number of good reports are uh, written by the students at the graduate level at the post graduate level and even the mphil phd mphil and phd dissertations are available now nowadays but uh, but the uh, at the post graduate level and the undergraduate level a number of good scholarships are not available so all such type of information which generally as it is not published some uh, some uh, places we uh, also call uh, uh, such type of things are the gray literature but still all such intellectual assets are not available for public as it is submitted in a university and it is died in the same place as it is not maintained it is not provided by uh, it is uh, not uh, uh, provided at at a platform where the uh, the information may be used efficiently for the future for the further and the future usage so uh, basically for uh, for adopting the open access policies for supporting the open access movements open access uh, platforms and the initiatives the librarians can play a great and a wider role for uh, and i am very much sure that if we if we are doing such type of things uh, we also are uh, getting the good reputation in academic uh, universe not only in your institution but around the world so <coughs> if we uh, if we discuss about the open access publishing you know a uh, uh, few of uh, the researchers of, uh, of the institutions they can manage they they uh, generally manage to publish their uh, 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 research work to the reputed publishers apart from that most of the uh, most of the faculty members or the researchers they uh, can, uh, they cannot reach up to the up to the good publishers uh, because you know when uh, uh, if Uh, you submit your manuscript to a publisher what they do they they just uh, send you certain terms and conditions and the on the basis of that term and conditions you have to decide whether you have to pay for your scholarship sometimes sometimes they don't ask for money but they are uh, they ask for the buyback of uh, volumes and apart from that they uh, they will also ask you to uh, to change a number of things uh, on the basis of uh, on the basis of uh, that they can uh, get some commercial benefits out of your research so uh, uh, in such conditions being a librarian being being an information officer we have to uh, take care of the open access publishing modules and uh, you know a number of open access publication uh, module, uh, modules are available around the world nowadays and on the basis of the initiatives on the basis of the efforts of the information professionals nowadays the commercial publishers they have also uh, changed their publication modules to op gold open access so that they can uh, come up with with the uh, with the open access Uh, modules uh, for uh, supporting open access movements around the world so here uh, you will be noticing uh, the the term gold open access and the green open access and here uh, in the gold open access uh, uh, the publish uh, the publishing can be done uh, in the publishers uh, uh, journal uh, by paying 
the article processing money and uh, uh, even in the green o green oa routes are also there if institutions are managing the journals and in institutions they uh, uh, they uh, uh, like if we talk about the national university of delhi we come up with uh, the five journals and out of five uh, for the four journals we uh, uh, support the green oa routes and the, all the articles are managed and maintained by the web uh, on the website of the universities and uh, on uh, in such case uh, the university as uh, the funding is done by the university so no charge is done uh, no charge is uh, taken uh, from the author so uh, first of all uh, we should be very much Uh, aware and we should be very much clear a clear cut uh, uh, thing that uh, which type of route we have to uh, inform to our users so that uh, to the uh, our faculty members and the and the students so that they can publish their uh, research outcome in the open access Uh, module so apart from that hybrid journals are also there where a few articles uh, which are uh, 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 paid or supported by uh, some institutions or uh, by the funding agencies are available to access free of cost and few journals are so few articles are uh, paid uh, which are which are not supported by any funding agencies so first of all we have to keep in mind that how we can support we can uh, we can uh, push our faculty members for open access publishing as you know uh, various models are uh, there in uh, open access you know uh, for the uh, for the uh, uh, open access uh, we we have the golden open access we have green open access we have hybrid open access we, we also have the bronze open access so uh, uh, as uh, in several time i have already we have already discussed about gold open access and gold open access is basically uh, an arrangement by the commercial publishers where uh, annual Uh, where article processing uh, charges are uh, charged and copyright is retained by the author and the permission uh, barriers are generally removed and the open the articles is article or the whatever the publication is available free of cost on the publisher's website website for the general public but for maintenance the payment is uh, the processing fees is paid, paid by the authors so apart from that green open access basically this is a version of the publication where uh, where um, the in general term the scholarships are actually archived in the repository and uh, 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 anybody can anybody if uh, uh, the access is provided free of, uh, in open in open environment uh, on public ip so the other people can around the world can access the things and there there, there is no embargo period and uh, there can be there can be barrier to reuse but uh, the author usually does not does not retain the copyright and the copyright is a uh, 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 just handed over to that particular institutions and uh, a number of other type of licenses open access access uh, or uh, open common licenses are there so uh, it are uh, these type of uh, licenses are tagged and on the basis of that these uh, open access resources are provided to use on the basis of the uh, type of licenses uh, cho chosen by the author so apart from that hybrid open access is also there where a subscription based general uh, in a subscription based journal the authors they uh, just uh, permit to make an article available on open access where the author is uh, agreeing to pay for uh, open accessing of that particular journal and apart from that a uh, bronze open access is also there where the content is free to read and or download or the publisher on the publisher's website but it is not openly licensed and this means it cannot be freely shared and the publishers is able to withdraw access at any time you know uh, where uh, the 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 copyright is not uh, properly uh, with with the publisher and uh, and and uh, as and when the publisher thinks that he uh, he uh, the, uh, they can remove the content from any time from their publishers so <clears throat> if we if we see uh, the statistics of 2022 you know Uh, you will see that still uh, as uh, uh, the commercial publishers as the money is involved and they do uh, uh, various efforts on the basis of the money uh, subscription only uh, scholarships are uh, uh, still it has edge to access but still if you will notice that in, since 2021 the gold open access gold open access initiatives has been rapidly increasingly has rapidly increased and apart from that green and bronze is also uh, has has some age and uh, uh, the gold open access 
nowadays as most of the people uh, uh, most of the publishers and most of the organization institutions they are coming up with the gold oa so it is rising nowadays so uh, now uh, a number of open access licensing module modules are there as and when you uh, you will um, uh, connect with your uh, faculty members and the students and you will convey them that you should come up with your uh, intellectual assets in open access publications so they will ask you about the security and they will ask you certain arrangements so uh, uh, so, so how uh, they can put their material how un, under what copyright or how what the licensing terms will be used so uh, creating common licenses it was uh, basically the 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 first and the first foremost uh, uh, initiatives taken by uh, taken uh, around the world so that uh, the few terms and condition based licenses may be created and on the basis of that the the authors may uh, choose the author may choose how they want to circulate their material whether uh, the author want that uh, uh, his or her material may be used free of cost or anybody can use it anybody can uh, uh, can uh, keep the text the complete or the short part of the text in uh, in further uh, as, as the, the, anybody can use further or uh, anybody can distribute it or anybody can uh, even the author just want to restrict the things people can read it but they can't use it if they are using they must attribute the things uh, attribute uh, 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 about their work and uh, <clears throat> apart from that author uh, just want that uh, they 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 just they agree that their material may be used but nobody can download it nobody can not use it for their purposes so in such case a number of licenses have been created and uh, if we if we talk about the create common li licenses it, basically these licenses have been created for filling the gap and these licenses actually provided uh, 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 licenses uh, uh, licensing arrangement and the public domain tools that gives every person and organization in the world a free simple and standardized way to grant copyright permissions for creating an academic works you know <clears throat> when we uh, when we publish one book or any article with the, the commercial publishers they they, uh, they just send one uh, copyright form and we have to uh, uh, agree a number of terms and conditions so when we come up with the open access and we uh, uh, come up uh, the publication in open access so in such case uh, in such case uh, a number of uh, uh, tools we have to take care of and these basically creative commons are such type of tools uh, uh, which provides the uh, which provides even which allows others to copy distribute and make use of these works and creative commons supported cc uh, creative commons global networks which is a community initiative working to increase the volume breadth and quality of openly available knowledge worldwide you know uh, you know uh, basically this community is uh, supporting uh, is uh, basically building a good sound quantum of the open access resources uh, and is supporting uh, for uh, development of the uh, the open repository open environment so that people around the world can grab the information the standard quality information around the world so uh, these were the policies so uh, i'll i'll uh, give a, a small overview over uh, a small overview over various open access initiative around the world based on such policies as uh, as uh, i uh, already discussed about the unesco uh, public domain guidelines which were uh, which was introduced in 2004 on the basis of that government of india came up with uh, with the open file or the open uh, uh, open information system for various department departments the government departments uh, so that people can have uh, people uh, the uh, people around the can can have such information the public government information free of course so case law information system is there all the uh, uh, judgments delivered by the indian courts uh, not only the supreme courts not only the high courts even the judgments delivered by the district courts it's are available free of cost even if you are a layman if you have uh, uh, file a case and you just want to know the status of your case case status uh, module is also there so you can put your uh, name uh, or the party name and on the basis of that party name you can 
reach uh, the uh, the you can see the status of your case uh, uh, at vast uh, state uh, state your case is there so apart from the government organization various ngos are also there which are also supporting the case law system like indian kanun uh, is a web portal which is providing uh, good services for uh, providing uh, the case law search uh, for you and uh, this is basically the screenshot of the judgment system of the supreme court of india and not only the supreme court of india around the world uh, you can uh, you can have the public government information free of cost like you know you, if you need the uh, supreme court uh, uh, supreme court judgments of the canada if you need the supreme court uh, uh, as the supreme court of the australia is known as high court so australian high court judgment you get supreme court judgments you can have a look in uh, the all the judgments in open access you know uh, as india was a part of uh, the british uh, colonial uh, uh, part uh, part so uh, uh, so if you need something you if you are doing if your researcher is doing research uh, on the colonial uh, period of india british india so uh, uk house of lords judgments are also available uh, free of cost uh, and you can also uh, uh, inform to your users that most of the things are available free of cost so apart from that uh, as uh, the government of india uh, is very much particular for adopting the open access policies of the united nations and uh, around the world so uh, the all the legislative material as like parliament parliamentary debates are available free of cost uh, if you just want to know about any law uh, as you have to uh, refer the parliamentary debates debates uh, which 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 was taken place at that uh, uh, during the pass of that particular law so such type of things uh, each and everything are available free of cost if you want to know the constitution of any country around the world latest constitution in india so you can uh, uh, visit to the constitute it is a very good site so apart from that if you uh, just want to access the legislation of india india code is basically this is the government of india initiative and with the help of that uh, you can uh, get all all state and the central legislations and the act uh, uh, in the same format and apart from that uh, prs legislative uh, research uh, it is a, it is an ngo and government uh, basically support this ngo so that the uh, the policy and research related to uh, the legislation of india uh, 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 may be done in, in in a greater way so the all uh, the reports and all the uh, the, the bills and acts and the the evaluative analysis material related to legislation you can access in it not only the india legislation of australia legislation of canada legislation of united kingdom united states <coughs> all are available free of course to access so uh apart from that uh, the parliamentary commission not only the india the other the, all the all the commission reports of around the world are available free of cost to access uh, uh to access at a single platform from the from the click of mouse uh, 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 mouse uh, uh, on the internet so in open access module so uh, why i uh, just skipped it and why i uh, informed uh, uh, you all about all such resources because you know uh, we as a librarian we have to uh, be a multi dimensional subject based knowledge so because uh, when when uh, the uh, when we are a librarian we have to deal the professors and the students from the various streams so we should have a sound knowledge uh, from which field we have to inform to our student uh, and not only uh, we have to give the reference services in the oa era we also have to play as the oa referral librarian uh, oa referral librarian uh, librarian uh, 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 services so that um, we can inform the our uh, students so uh, students and the faculty members from there from where they can use it so apart from that a number of journals and journals and scholarships based databases are there i am not very much sure how many of you know about the ssrn and uh, ssrn basically it is a repository we will discuss in uh, later slide slide 2 direct directory of open access journals are also there most of you know about it so apart from ssrn and uh, directory of open access journal few more <coughs> databases are um, few more search engine based databases are there like core and jern uh, core and jern are uh, the databases which uh, act in the same pattern the google search do and uh, on the basis of uh, the JERN and core, uh, you can uh, inform to your uh, researchers if they just want to access the quality academic resources 
they need not go to google they can go to the core and the journal so this is the social science research network uh, basically is it is a database where you can also manage your own scholarship uh, you can uh, inform to your uh, uh, faculty members and the students uh, they can create their own individual account and they can also upload their scholarship they can maintain any maintain any uh, on it and uh, this is basically <clears throat> a reservoir of the uh, research uh, scholarships and the outcomes around the world and like if uh, um, uh, my account is there i have uploaded uh, most of my scholarships on it uh, so uh, like that millions uh, researchers they have uploaded their scholarships and all such uh, scholarships in billions in billions in numbers may be accessed by all of the researchers all of the users of that particular databases so directory of open access you know all and this is the core uh, database uh, core search engine uh, it just look like a google and uh, you can inform your <coughs> even you can uh, tag you can prepare one uh, open domain uh, open access page or the public domain page on your library website and you can index these resources uh, so that your uh, clientele your uh, your faculty members can directly use can, can directly be benefited with the help of the information this is the you know the, uh, both databases are like like the google and apart from that you know uh, we uh, we all know about the sort ganda ethos oer uh, resources and apart from that international law treaties are uh, also available if you just if you are just uh, somebody is asking for research that how uh, the india has a relation with any country so you can inform that indian treaties are there international treaties are also there which we also know known as bilateral uh, uh, bilateral treaties so uh, uh, apart from that a number of scholarship and research Uh, materials are also available in digital repositories you know uh, as uh, india is a signatory of the un uh, uh, council so a number of national repositories uh, ha have been developed in india national digital library of india is there and uh, you know uh, about uh, ndli what uh, the ndli played a role during the covid time and uh, a number of uh, resources available around the uh, around the country in various languages you can access and you can inform to your uh, users to use so apart from that india.gov.in uh, is uh, the another uh, portal where you can uh, get the uh, all the legislations all, all all type of services and the information at a single platform so apart from that you know uh, uh, government of india uh, through ugc infinite has, has come up with the uh, show uh, uh, ganga where uh, more than 3 lakh uh, uh, more than 3 lakh 50000 uh, full text uh, uh, thesis we can access apart from that data.gov. Uh, uh in is or uh, the another uh, web portal where the data sets of the government of india uh, not only from the central government the state governments are also available to access so uh, as a, a number of uh, uh, databases are uh, are there from uh, uh, which uh, which are subscribed by the university so uh, for, for uh, providing the uh, uh, statistics Uh, related to government uh, uh, government or the non government initiatives in india so uh, this is the uh, portal where uh, which provides you the statistical information of a uh, uh, statistical type of information uh, 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 of india the uh, free of course so apart from that national data repositories are also there and uh, apart from that office of the general registrar and census commission uh, commissioners it is also there so <coughs> so is these type of repositories uh, have been maintained by government of india for providing information and the statistics to the researchers you know uh, these repositories uh, the statistics based repositories are very important when uh, your your users uh, they they need it for uh, their research purpose They're like india votes is the another repository where uh, the statistics the election data you can also uh, download or you can also inform to your users so icssr data services uh, repositories are also there from where you can access the uh, micro data catalog you can also download the data set depository data is also there also there also there so uh, this is the very uh, very uh, good tools you you should Uh, no and you should uh, disseminate among your uh, faculty members and the student apart from that the gadget of india is also there so so the whatever the law created by the government of india uh, in the parliament it is notified in a government uh, in the in a gadget and after publishing in that particular gadget it is, it is uh, uh, actually known as law so all the gadgets since uh, since uh, the establishment of the parliament of india are available free of cost and uh, uh, you need not to purchase the uh, the bound 
volume of the gazette of india so apart from that of various uh, institutional repositories uh, uh, which are which are maintained by academic and research institutions like you know uh, ignu uh, basically it maintains the e gyan ac dot in and you simple have to register if register in any course or even you have to register uh, as a as a guest for getting the information whatever uh, the course materials uh, are available you know most of the civil services as as parents they need the uh, the material of ignu so uh, this is the uh, a good repository where you can access you can provide <coughs> access to your users so apart from that uh, in the academic or the institutional uh, repository uh, uh, lineup niskear uh, also provides one uh, online periodical request trivia you can access more than i think 13 uh, 23 uh, journals free of course and apart from that digital repository uh, from the ramanuj research institution is also there and all the research are uh, done by the um, in the physics and uh, the ramanuj work and the scientific uh, and, the, and and the, and the number of scientific informations are available uh, uh, in this repository apart from that in in insi digital repositories are also there so uh, if we talk about the digital repository maintained by the academic publishers ssrn is there i or uh, we already discussed it apart from that research gate is also there where you can create your own record and apart from that academia is also there academia basically they charge uh, money for uh, for some instance it is free but uh, for uh, if you just want to get the more features they charge money so apart from that fixshare is also the another platform where you can share you can store you can discover the research of your uh, interest area and you can also you you should inform at least you should inform about all such data uh, all such platform to your uh, teachers and the students so that they can uh they can keep their uh, previous past research and the uh, and the research outcomes for for the use of the general public to around the world so uh, uh in general uh, 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 a number of uh, repositories are there so a number of uh, common platforms are there from, uh, which, which helps to access the repositories around the world like uh, uh, re3data.org is there so in the basis of that uh, 51 repositories run by institution in india it is showing that around 51 repositories run by institution in india around the world uh, and number of repositories which which, which are already indexed Uh, with the red three data dot org may be uh, accessed, may be provide, uh, may be informed to the rest or uh, rest of your uh, academic community. And apart from that, Open Door is there, and uh, with the help of the Open Door, uh, the the open access resources which are available free of cost to access may be may be uh, disseminated, may be informed to your uh, clientele. You know, when we are in library, we should not constrain ourselves. up to uh, only the google or up to the print material so all such materials you know uh, 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 on the basis of the open access policies a number of initiatives have been taken place around the world so this is uh, uh, this is basically <coughs> this is basically uh, uh, the the responsibility of the librarian uh, and uh, and we should uh, we should also take some leverage advantages of the over the open access resources available around of around the world you know the the researchers they don't know the exact place from where they can access the uh, the uh, the reliable and the authentic information they generally go to the google or any other search engine so here the responsibility of the librarian is that we should connect our users with the right resources with the help of right resources so uh, apart from that roar map is also the an an another a uh, search engine of the repository where we can uh, access the the information preserved in n number of institutional repository around the world so if we uh, talk about the law be press legal repository is also there and our law archives repository is also there so apart from that as uh, in the initial uh, initial part of our uh, talk we discussed about a various uh initiative by the commercial publishers you know uh, nowadays commercial publishers they are also coming with the open uh, open access uh, uh, publishing modules if you will visit the website of any uh, commercial publishers you will find the open access publication policies they have and uh, um, the most of the publishers like springers bloomsbury i have mentioned few uh, the brill open access publishers oxford uh, oxford university press project and use in 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 tech open so all they have uh, their open access policies and on the basis of that they allow 
uh, authors and the contributors to publish their books in the open access so uh, on the basis of that you know uh, the this uh, if we talk about the springer link springer they have come up more than 875 open access books till date um, now the number may be uh, maybe more and apart from that taylor and francis bloomsbury oxford university brill open X, uh, open book publishers cambridge university publishers intech mu ios press open access publishing in european uh, networks and j store so uh, and more than more than 70000 books you can access free of cost uh, with the help of uh, uh, these open access policies adopted by the publishers around the world so these you know uh, sometimes when uh, your uh, your users comes to you and they ask for uh, some, uh, some particular books you uh, you will uh, be more aware about that whether you should know that whether this policy this particular book if it's Uh, uh, available in uh, uh, in open access initiatives or under uh, and published under open access policy of the publishers so you should you should connect all such uh, open access books uh, with your uh, uh, users so apart from that you know open access books databases other databases are there in internet archives are there which provides more than 1500 collections and more than 5 million books and uh, uh, the, the books which are no uh, not under copyright law uh, which are not uh, uh, under uh, uh, not only under copyright law which has no copyright law even which uh, for which the copyright has been amended amend uh, abandoned so, so such type of books are uh, actually scanned and are provided full text in internet archives and you, and you know uh, the the old books which are not available in print format for purchasing you will find in the internet archive free of cost for download if it is not under copyright law the project gutenberg is the same uh, type of project and you can access um, you know uh, uh, a number of uh, uh, the open access book with the help of that and open online book page open library the national academy press digital book index a directory of open access journal open access <clears throat> publishing in european uh, network bartley and uh, uh, free books so so these are the sub, some examples uh, which are basically the the platforms with the help of that uh, the librarians can uh, disseminate the open access books open access materials to their clientele so uh, basically uh, <clears throat> on the basis basis of the open access policy um, Uh, 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 I'll I'll uh, recommend you a number of uh, uh, number of initiatives which, uh, being an information main manager, we have to take care uh, as uh, for uh, open access content development. First of all, uh, uh, institutional repository. I know institutional report, institutional repository. We should have uh, uh, some knowledge of uh, some uh, IR softwares like DSpace, Greenstones. e prints and uh, so on so apart from that uh, you can also manage maintain the things your institutional repository uh, on your library web page with a simple linking or with simple uploading of the uh, information or the pdf or any kind of information so apart from that uh, promotions of creative commons is very important for us because uh, if we uh, promote the creative common licenses <clears throat> licenses among the uh, academic community in such case we we are just serving uh, uh, we are serving to the academic community in a very positive manner because the most of the things if we uh, we we will be the brand ambassador of the common crea uh, creative commons and we will promote the uh, uh, open access in uh, open access in publication so in such case the open access uh, research uh will be more useful for the rest of the world because uh, the uh, the all the institutions the rest of the world are not equal because the funding policy is not equal if we uh, talk about uh, the uh, whole world some countries are developed some are underdeveloped in some in same condition in india we will see few institutions they have a good <coughs> financial support for uh, uh, building collections but but um, you will find a maximum uh, institution they don't have uh, funding uh, they have funding crunch they don't have uh, uh, good funding uh, support so in such case the open access if we promote uh, the uh, the open access publications so it means that uh, 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 
we are supporting such type of institutions. So <coughs> institutions policies for publications we have to create. Like in NLU Delhi, we have created the open access policies, publication policies, and, and on the basis of that policies, the, the faculty members, they if they are going to publish their uh, scholarships anywhere around the world uh, with any publishers, with so they have to uh, give their uh, they have to give their uh, preprint to uh, NLU Delhi and NLU Delhi in IR. So uh, on the basis of that IR, that particular uh, scholarships we circulate, we give access within the uh, within the campus uh, right now because uh, the preprint uh, for uh, giving the preprint during the preprint. Uh, they have to the uh, the uh, uh, author they have to uh, sign uh, the term and conditions of of the copyright so, so on the basis of that uh, copyright term and conditions they have to uh, they have to mention that, that they have submitted their preprint to the uh, institutions as per the policies so apart from that knowledge of open access publishing module we should also have a number of apart from the <coughs> creative commons a number of other uh, open access uh, poli uh, publishing modules are also there even uh, the the gold and the uh, the green open access models we should have a sound knowledge so apart from that sound knowledge of creative commons licenses we should also have apart from that we should also have the uh, knowledge of author isb and you know uh, 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 it is very now it is very easy to get the author isbn you have to uh, inform uh, the uh, your author your uh, professor that uh, he or she can uh, apply for the isbn with simple click of mouse the, he or she has to upload certain information about the publication publication jacket and uh, uh, his or her uh, Aadhaar card number or some certain information, and within five or ten days they can access their ISBN by their by, by uh, themselves, and they can also <coughs> publish at the rate co uh, copyright with the author. So these trends has has come up uh, nowadays because uh, most of the materials are uh, the digital one, and the authors are preferring nowadays the self publishing uh, of the book so that they can keep their uh, publication in open access. And uh, uh, on the basis of that, they can get the um, more visibility and more citations. So apart from that, copyright and the licensing clauses, it should be <coughs> it should be well informed to your users. So uh, uh, when we talk about the open access content management, number a number of tools are there. So uh, when we talk about the open access resources, uh, we should know uh, we should know the sound uh, knowledge about the open uh, open access book platforms. We should also know the open access databases of the journals and apart from that we should also know the open access <coughs> open institutional repositories information and uh, uh, the other open access uh, uh, open educational resources initiatives initiative we should know uh, in a uh, in a <coughs> wider way so that uh, we can uh, index all the resources with the help of the uh, various content management tools uh, for uh, the further access so uh, you know uh, a number of free web building uh, builder tools are available like Wix, webs webs uh, i think it, it is now uh, not working Wibley, site one two three mojello uh, web web node web press so so these are the tools where uh, is like like a like as like ms word you have to uh, create one account online and it it <clears throat> And, mo and most of the uh, most of the features are free. If you just want to go for the advanced thing, they will ask for money. But uh, the, like Wix and Wibley, if you will work, so uh, these are uh, the the tools. Uh, you, uh, as you are working on the MS Word, you will be feeling uh, like the same uh, uh, li like the same way you can uh, create your own website and all the tools as i have explained in uh, the pre previous slide like you should know the open access tools you can index all such uh, all such uh, databases all the platforms open access platforms at a single platform so that your library your uh, clientele can get all the information uh, all the open access information at a single <coughs> Uh, platform so this is this is just a thing is just a screenshot that like like all the databases with the help of the icon and the hyperlinking you can put on your library website so that apart from the uh, commercial databases the other open access databases can be used by your clientele at a single uh, instance so apart from that one more thing i just want to share with you about the google custom search engine tool i think most of you know about it but uh, i i just want to share about google uh, custom search tools for those who don't know about it uh, this is basically a tool where uh, like if uh, you uh, just want to as as a simple you just you uh, search in a google 
for a particular information like i am searching that constitution of india and uh, when we write constitution of india in a google so it will give result from uh, from uh, from uneven server so uh, any server from uh, it is striking for but uh, we just want to restrict our search so for for this we can use the google custom search why this is important when you are using the open access databases uh, like uh, 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 the various ebook databases open access uh, uh, ebook databases you just if you just want to access and you are indexing all four or five or seven uh, open access ebooks uh, database on your uh, website so it will be needing to search a single a search uh, window so that you uh, so that uh, the all the four five or six or uh, whatever the number is uh, the databases can be searched from a single platform so for this purpose the google custom search tool is very important uh, here uh, you can uh, include the you can uh, even you can uh, 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 you can uh, uh, what i can say you you can uh, set from which website the 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 search result should come so the that particular uh, website will be hit when you will create you will use the google search engine tools so <clears throat> when uh, when uh, I, i'll also recommend you to uh, uh, contribute in the open access policy uh, uh, and for that you have to uh, keep in mind the various points while, while you are structuring the open access policies like you have to uh, come up with the catchy title or the header and you should write the preamble where you should uh, clear cut uh, write the basic uh, basic uh, basic uh rules and the objectives whatever you want to do you have to explain the self description you have to define the open access terms and uh, 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 uh open access terms and the other uh, other terms which your institutions uh is keen to use and you have to re uh, refer the other policies the international and the institutional policies you have to put the explanation you have to put the declaration uh declaration of intent uh, uh, and you have to uh, create certain declaration form so that uh, if you uh, 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 if, if you are uh, 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 in later stage you are uh, accepting or you are uh, taking the scholarships of the faculty member or the students so uh, you have to take the consent and you have to uh, uh, write the you have to uh, take into consideration the recommendations for actions you have to take the reservations technical services you have to take care you have to take some advisory services you have to uh, engage uh, people from uh, the uh, from the industry of the publication so that you can get the right advice for uh, uh, for creating this policies and apart from that you have to uh, come up with the good conclusion so uh, at the end i would uh, uh, just recite the saying of the thomas as thomas l freedom and, and he says that connecting all the knowledge centers on the planet together into a single global network could usher in an amazing era of prosperity and innovation so with this note i uh, thanks to the organizers and i also thanks to the uh, participants who patiently uh, listen uh, my talk and if uh, uh, anybody has any a uh, query or want to discuss anything it is open to all hand over to organizers so all are allowed to give thank you akash sir thank you sir for our invitation and giving such a nice and very informative lecture for our participants so now floor is open to raise any questions from the participant side uh, side they may ask their question in the chat box also or they may raise their digital hands or they may unmute their also uh, themselves also ye yeah, acha yeah. chat box se hello hello uh, yeah yes uh, yes sir, sir. my my name is santosh kumar kanojia i am a research scholar uh, yes yes so uh, what is the open access module uh, will you will you explain to me? sir yes uh, yeah actually uh, open access models modules basically uh, it, the, these are the uh, uh, 
uh, uh, these are basically the uh, uh, way where uh, th uh, uh, through which you can publish you can uh, publish your uh, uh, scholarship in open access like when uh, like you are a research scholar you just want to publish your article in uh, in a journal of taylor and francis so in such case <clears throat> if you are submitting your uh, manuscript to taylor and francis uh, for any journal so in such case they can ask you uh, even simply they they will accept your manuscript and in such case they will uh, send you one uh, copyright form and on the basis of that copyright form your uh, uh, publication will be published this is basically the closed open access module and if uh, you have some uh, funding arrangement or you just want to keep your uh, research output or the articles in open access in such case uh, taylor and francis i'm just keeping one example so they will ask you uh, to choose their gold open access module and on the basis of that they ask for the article processing fees so this is the gold open access module so uh, i am just putting the third example in third example if you uh, have submitted your manuscript in a journal which is published by uh, or even uh, uh, your preprint or uh, leave it preprint if you have published your uh, you have submitted your manuscript in a journal which is published by any government organizations or a, a university and they have accepted your articles and they are putting your manuscript as a final article on their web page or in their ir in simple term we can say it in, in institutional repository in such case they are not charging anything from you so uh, we can uh, we can see it as it is the uh, green open access modules so uh, green open access module it is uh, it it may be in the another way if you are uh, publishing your uh, article in taylor and francis you are paying or even you are not paying in such case if you are a research scholar in a university and they that particular university has the open access policy with uh, the publication policy and uh, under this open access policy you have to submit your preprint to the university so uh, and uh, that particular preprint it is uh, actually uh, the university is submitting in their ir so it is also the green open access module of publication okay. thank you sir thank you sir and side okay thank you sir hello am i audible Yes, yes. Uh, uh, sir, I'm Sovik Konar. I'm working as assistant librarian in a university in West Bengal. Sir, my question is that uh, you have talking about uh, various uh, idea uh, and preprint server and all this. Sir, uh, for uh, uploading any documents or maintaining idea, is there any copyright policy <laughs> or the that how can we uh, manage that if there is any question or any anomalies happened uh, regarding idea so is there any standard policy uh, uh, so like uh, uh, i will give you an example of nlu delhi so like we have the ir vidhi gyan sangrah with us so we uh, established vidhi gyan sangrah uh, uh, around 4 years back and uh, before establishing that uh, repository we came up with one policy guidelines and uh, that policy guidelines we prepared on the basis of the ir policy guidelines of uh, numerous universities around the world so uh, basically we uh, just taylor made uh, we uh, did uh, some changes and we uh, took the relevant uh, relevant uh, clauses and uh, the things which are which are fit for us so uh, when you are going for the ir you have to uh, refer a number of ir policies around the world of the universities like you are from the academic institutions so you should go for the academic institution uh, website so most of the ir policies you will get so on the basis of that you have to create your document based on your own tailor made requirement because like if we uh, 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 talk about the nlu delhi policy uh, we here the faculty members they agreed to uh, give their uh, preprint but uh, they opposed to uh, put the uh, <clears throat> the periodical report of the undergraduate students whatever they submit in uh, each semester so this is basically uh, uh, you have to decide on the basis of the basis of your own uh, terms and condition whatever the faculty members or the 
your board members uh, just want to keep in that particular IRS. But there is there is no any standard stipulated regulations by any organizations, so uh, 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 which you have to blindly follow. Okay, thank you. So okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Akash, sir, for your valuable time with us.